Huh. Okay. You guys want to play poker? That's right, little gamers. Hunter's back with a brand new video. After another month long break. Poker Night at the Inventory is a virtual poker game developed by Telltale Games and released on the Steam platform on November 22nd, 2010. Originally conceived as a spiritual sequel to Telltale's first poker game, Telltale Texas Hold'em by Telltale Games, Poker Night at the Inventory sees Max from Sam and Max, Strong Bad from Homestar Runner, Heavy Weapons Guy from Team Fortress 2, and Tycho from Penny Arcade play a rousing game of Telltale. Texas Hold'em with you, the gamer. Instead of using original characters like Telltale did with Telltale's Texas Hold'em by Telltale Games, Telltale opted to use licensed characters to fully realize their idea of what would video game characters be doing when they're not on the clock. Also because those characters were ugly as sin. Who taught you to play poker? Your mom. Max and Strong Bad were chosen due to Telltale already having a working relationship with both of those series creators, what with Telltale releasing three seasons of Sam and Max games at that point, and Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people, which you should all play. That game is wonderful. I am dead serious. That is a great Telltale game. They just put it back up on Steam for purchase. Go buy it. Oh shit, I gotta talk about the delistings at some point, don't I? Valve and Telltale were also buddy-buddy at the time, what with Sam and Max, the Devil's Playhouse, having tie-in items in TF2, hence why Heavy is here. And Tycho was added because... What would Gabe do? I don't know, block me on Twitter? Oh, you just couldn't let me have this, could you, you piece of shit? With everything completed, Poker Night at the Inventory was unleashed onto an unsuspecting market. A game to define a generation. One that would be talked about for ages. A true gaming classic. It's just fucking poker. I'll re-race. I'll fall. I'm Audi 5000. Max wins the hand. I fold too. Everyone folded to you. You win the pot. But, but, uh, all right. I, I don't know. Like, what, what do you want me to say here? Poker Night at the Inventory is just as it says. It is, in fact, Poker Night at the Inventory. You hold them, you fold them, you bluff them, you bet them. That's it. Oh my god, how am I going to make a full video out of this? Oh, the- The bounties! The bounties! Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! After you win or lose your first game, in my case win, you're given your first opportunity to claim a bounty. The normal cutscene will start to play, but then one of the four stooges will state that they don't have enough to pay up that evening, so they put up a special item of theirs to make up their $10,000 buy-in. All you have to do is be the one to knock them out of the tournament, and the item is yours. And this? This is what got TF2 players in this game. Each bounty corresponds to a different item in Team Fortress 2, so after you claim the bounty, you unlock said item for use in that game. That means you can unlock up to five items for use in Team Fortress 2. And that doesn't even include the poker visor you got for pre-ordering the game. Now, I should note that I do have all the bounty items that you can get in Poker Night at the Inventory. Here's my Steam achievement list as proof. So you might be wondering where my Luger Morph is. I got the license to maim right there. Where's the funny little pistol I hear you asking? Do you remember my TF2 video where I said I played stupid games with trading? I traded away my Luger Morph for a team captain. <laughs> I also do not have the team captain anymore. Now, why, why would I do that? That's stupid. That's ridiculous. It's because at the time that I did that, you could trade untradeable items in TF2 by gift wrapping them and giving them to another player. That's just how trading worked back then. So I thought, oh, I'll just give this away now and I'll just get it again later. So Valve took away that ability? I mean, thankfully, out of all of the Poker Night items, the Luger Morph is the only one that 
you can still get technically, but that's because a vintage one exists, and the vintage Luger Morph is what you got for pre-ordering Sam and Max the Devil's Playhouse. Which is fine, I guess, but I, I don't really care. And you know why I don't care? Because I'm not paying 20 fucking dollars for a pistol reskin. I'm not gonna do that. You're a dummy if you do that, and I'm not a fucking dummy. But if you want to give me one for free, that would be totally cool. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going so hard onto the bounty system and the cosmetics and all that. And it's because I don't know what to fucking say. This is poker. And I suck ass at it. The player has been eliminated from play. Man, if I were you, I'd be sweating hate. It would froth from my mouth and nose. It'd be like that movie, There Will Be Froth. Man, shut up! Yeah, I'm not exactly a poker wizard. I don't know how to recognize really anything. I don't know a straight from a flush, but I picked a few things up along the way, and I did slowly start to get better. Not by much, but still. I would be remiss if I also didn't mention that Poker Night does in fact have its own set of unlockables, but it's just decks and tables. Uh, you get those for either winning or just playing the game normally. It's nothing substantial, but it is fun playing poker with TF2 cards on a Trogdor table. So that's something. Banang. Banang. Stop it! Nine. All right, look, I'm going to be real here. I'm getting real bored of talking about poker and how it works and the AI and all this shit. So I'm going to move on to what I think is the true star of Poker Night at the Inventory. And that is the character writing. Hey, Heavyman, you think you could take care of the king of town for me? I can assassinate king. Yes. It's expensive, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa! If I take care of, I meant maybe you and I sneak into his room and shave off half his mustache. I am not best at sneaking. Or maybe we could confront him in a dark alley then? This is better. That way blood wash away in the rain. Oh man, you're gonna totally murder the king of town, aren't you? Oh well. Telltale just got it, man. Obviously, it helps that they were working with everyone's owners and all that shit, but God, everyone sounds right. They talk how they're supposed to. They, it's like, it's just, it's them. It's the characters talking to each other. This is Max talking to Tycho from Penny Arcade. This is Strong Bad making fun of Tycho from Penny Arcade. This is the heavy just going, I am reminded of time engineer kill my entire team. Damn, Heavy, that's, uh, heavy. I'm sorry to hear that. I search entire base for him. He tries to kill me with turret and mini turret, but I crush his toys like they are made of paper. Sound like some crappy toys, if you ask me. Then I find him, hiding by teleporter. I take his gun away from him. He tries to hit me with wrench. <laughs> so I take wrench away from him. I take his wrench and shove it down his throat, all the way down to the handle. Christ. <laughs> then I rip off all his fingers one by one. Let's see you build toys now. <laughs> there is blood everywhere. And he's crying. <laughs> I think he cries out for mother, but... But <laughs> the wrench is stuck in his throat, <laughs> and it sounds like. <laughs> is this not the funniest thing? That is some f***ed up, man. To me, this is what Poker Night is all about. It's more than just the card game. It's just four guys shooting the shit all night, telling jokes, making fun of each other, having one guy talk about wanting to fuck animals. Ugh, hippos, corpulent brigands. Nothing like their elegant, ungulate sisters, the giraffes. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Those slender necks. Huh? So long and muscular, you just want to wrap your arms around them. And then maybe your legs just to see what it feels like. 
just want to get up there and sway in the wind. No? Is that not... Okay. Yeah, that was a thing in Penny Arcade. I, I don't... Uh, <laughs> and that was Poker Night at the Inventory. A simple, if not basic, virtual poker game that I think is worth more for the writing and care for the source material of the characters represented than it is for its general gameplay. I don't know, man. There's only so many ways that I can say it's just poker, because that's what it is. I remember this game being very cheap when it first released. I don't know exactly how much, and if I find it, Editing Hunter will put it right here. You know, you paid for what you got. It's just a poker game with a bunch of fictional characters telling jokes, which to me is more than worth it. And why it sucks, you can't buy this game anymore. We'll get to that a little later. Before we move on, I just want to give a quick shout out to a video I absolutely adore. This is the 18th Amendment, a Poker Night documentary uploaded by Miles Prower aficionado, Macon. This 39 minute epic goes into so much detail about Poker Night at the Inventory, from its development history, why characters were chosen, even down to how the AI works. It is a fantastic watch that I cannot recommend enough. I will be linking it right here and in the video description. Please show this video some love. It deserves it. All right, let's talk about the other one. Poker Night 2 is a direct sequel to Poker Night at the Inventory and follows in the series' grand tradition of just being poker. Still developed and published by Telltale Games, the game released on April 24, 2013 on the Xbox Live Arcade. Yes, this series has made the jump to console. It then released two days later on Steam for both Windows and Mac, six days later on the PlayStation Network, and a full month later on iOS. What the fuck? Poker Night 2 is more or less the same thing as Poker Night at the Inventory. It's just poker. You're just playing it against fictional characters. It's still pretty basic. But they did make one big change to the game. They added an extra mode. And this mode, I think, completely validates the need for a sequel. They added Omaha. Look, you, you got extra cards in your hands. So you can do more. Isn't that cool? No, the obvious difference is the change in cast. Instead of Max, Strong, Bad, Heavy, and Tycho, we have Brock Samson from Venture Brothers, Claptrap from Borderlands, Ash Williams from Evil Dead, and instead of Max, this time we have Sam from Sam and Max. Now, you might be wondering where the old boys went, and honestly, they had to go away to make room for the new guys. Outside of a cameo during the opening, they are nowhere to be seen, Outside of Max, Max is just sitting behind Sam and he's just doing his thing. Looking for something? <laughs> Check it out, Sam. I'm a tree surgeon. He's not really a tree surgeon. Open wide and say, ah! This was a triumph. Okay, seriously, the reason why for the change? It's a lot simpler than you think, actually. In a 2013 Polygon interview, Telltale Vice... Wait, Griffin McElroy? Telltale Senior Vice President Steve Allison told them that they just wanted to branch off into TV and movies. And since this is a post-Walking Dead Telltale, they made way more connections. They made connections over at Warner Brothers, Gearbox, and MGM, hence why you got Huey, Dewey, and Louie over there. Sam was a character that they just wanted to use just because he was another Telltale character. And GLaDOS was picked because they didn't want to dip into the TF2 well again. Now there were plans for Marty and Doc Brown from Back to the Future to appear, but with the more violent characters like Brock and Ash, it wouldn't tonally make a whole lot of sense. Same thing with the Walking Dead characters. They wanted to put them in, but tonally just wasn't going to work out. But that decision was made pretty far along into development, at least until the voice acting stage, because there are a ton of unused voice clips for a Walking Dead themed area. Ashley Williams has been eliminated. If you need me, I'll be at the... Ah, oh, crap. 
万歳！啊哈哈哈呀！哎呀！哦呀！哇！呀！ Now, while I did say that Poker Night 2 is similar to Poker Night at the Inventory, that really doesn't give it enough credit. Like I said, this is a post Walking Dead telltale, so the engine is much more refined. Character animations are a lot more expressive. They're actually timed with the fucking voice lines. It doesn't cut away and then restart like ten minutes later, like it did in the first game. Hey Max, remember when you found that time machine and went back to 1964 and met Mama Bosco? I'm going all in. Ooh, Carl. Yeah. Out of curiosity, did anything ever happen with that? Fucking stupid ass Telltale engine. Once again, the star of the show is the writing. It's awesome. I think it's even better than the first game. In my opinion, Patrick Warburton steals the show. His timing is amazing. His voice is great as always. He's wonderful. Love him. Love him. Love him, Miss Brock. Mr. Sampson, your pupils are dilating. Good hand. Oh, seriously. Well played. Brock Samson has been eliminated. Brock, Brock, do you require assistance? I'm fine. God, he's so fucking cool, dude. All the characters bounce off each other really well. There's a lot of great Easter eggs and references to stuff that you wouldn't even believe. Ash talks about like having shimp hair, and that is a reference you would only get if you read his first book. It's awesome. The love for these characters is just seeping out of my computer monitor. It's amazing. Now, right, I'll talk about the gameplay. Damn it! All right, look, Poker Night Two mechanically is the same as Poker Night at the Inventory. It's just poker. They added Omaha, so you get to play around with extra cards, but it's still fucking poker. That's it. Where it differentiates itself is with its unlockables. See, much like Poker Night at the Inventory. You also have a bounty system. However, in the first game, bounties just popped up randomly until you got them, so you could just keep resetting until you got the bounty that you wanted. Poker Night 2, you could only get one bounty at a time after doing three specific challenges, and these challenges are not randomized; they are set. You have to do them. You're never gonna get the same challenge twice. It is a set list, and this. Fucking owns, man. The challenge list actually challenges you to play poker efficiently. Sure, you get some random ones like buy drinks for multiple people at the table, but then you have challenges where you have to win with two of a kind or greater, or win a showdown with two or more players, or win two games in a row. That's awesome. And then after that. You can compete for a chance to win Claptrap's 2012 Spike VGA Character of the Year award. That little thing? It's just my 2012 Spike Video Game Award for Character of the Year. It looks familiar. I know you heard those peaks. I'm not re-recording that shit again. And also, if you rank third or above, you earn house tokens. And with the house tokens, you can purchase stuff like decks, chips, or tables. And the coolest part about that is that once you equip an entire set, the entire room will change to reflect that theme, and the correlating character will get a new outfit complete with new voice lines relating to said theme. There's just so much love and care put into this game. It's so fucking cool. From coast to coast, they track their demented prey. A pile of foes they leave in their wake. Woe to fools who dare to get in their way. If they had known you were coming, they probably wouldn't have made you a cake. And so begins our gruesome tale. Do not pass go. Go directly to jail. The Bigfoot waits. In his stinky abode, when Sam and Max make some tracks. When Sam and Max hit the road. Okay, that was weird. 
yet strangely nostalgic. It's beautiful, man. And because I know you're asking, yes, the bounties also correspond to items in Team Fortress 2. They aren't exact replicas of the bounties like they were in the first game, but they're still themed around the general idea of each character. These items also correspond to unlockables in Borderlands 2. Now, I don't have Borderlands. I've never played Borderlands. So thankfully, my good friend Metal Socks sent over some images of how these items look in the game. Thank you, Metal Socks. Subscribe to YouTube. Is that a good ad? And that's it. That's Poker Night 2. That's also Poker Night at the Inventory. There's not really too much else to talk about. At the end of the day, they're just poker games. Sure, they have fictional characters in them, but that's, that's it. But there's beauty in that simplicity, I find. I think these games are wonderful, and it's purely because of the crossover aspect. Seeing all these characters just shoot the shit and just talk and joke around and have fun and threaten to kill each other, it's just great. And it bums me the hell out that you can't buy them anymore. See, back in 2018, Telltale Games closed down. And with that, a lot of their games were taken off the market due to licensing. Poker Night 1 and Poker Night 2 were both taken down in 2019 because of that. Now, Telltale did end up coming back, but it's kind of like Atari or THQ, where it's another company using the name, and they rescued a lot of the IPs. That's why we're getting A Wolf Among Us 2. That's why games like Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People, and Wallace and Gromit, and Puzzle Agent, and all those games are back on Steam. But Poker Night isn't, and I don't think either game really has a chance. Maybe Poker Night at the Inventory can find a way to come back. I highly doubt Homestar Runner and Penny Arcade are holding out that much. I'm sure they can work something out. But Poker Night 2? That shit's never coming back on Steam, dude. Ash and Brock make that a complete impossibility. And that sucks, man. Like, it really does. There's just content in both Team Fortress 2 and Borderlands 2 that you just can't get. But even outside of that, these games are worth playing. Yeah, they're just poker games, but goddamn, if you're a fan of anything represented in these games, you'll have a blast. Playing these games reminded me how much I love Venture Brothers, how much I love Homestar Runner, how much I love Evil Dead. It just sucks. I hope with this video that I at least showcased why I think these games are special. And I guess this is an open letter too. Telltale, please find a way to put these games back up on Steam. Rescue them from licensing hell. I know you guys can just pirate this shit, but God damn it. I just want more people to play them the way they were meant to be played. These games are wonderful. I only have them because I bought them when they came out. And that sucks. I know a lot of people weren't able to do that and now it's too late. Come on Telltale, put these games back up. They deserve to be played. <laughs> Subscribe and email big guys for little fellas. Bye.